Welcome back. Okay, last week we looked at fractional utilization of VO2 max. And last weekend I did a race, and it gives us an opportunity to take that data and just talk about how we can modify our outlook on our zones based on what I call contact with reality. And races give us very useful uh, information. And I want to just run through how my race went with you quickly and give you some ideas on how you might use races to understand how you're doing and also to have a look at where you have your zone set because they can give us some valuable information on the top end uh, that we normally don't gather in training. Uh, I don't normally run close to a best effort 10k in training. I usually break it up and so it's a unique opportunity to have a look at things. So let's just recap from last time. Uh, the velocity of VO2 max was 17 kilometers per hour. And I had estimated the second threshold at 15.6 kilometers per hour. And then that first threshold at 12 kilometers per hour. Um, so go out, do the race, goes well. Splits were pretty even and I ran 15 kilometers per hour for 40 minutes. Now, that second threshold estimate is typically meant to be a hour of power type estimate. So it's your best effort for an hour. And if I ask myself, you know, could I have held that pace for another 20 minutes? I'm not sure. So I don't think so. So I think my prior estimate of 15.6 is a bit high. So what that would mean is I'd want to adjust my zones, assuming that second threshold pace was uh, 15 kilometers per hour, uh, four minute K pace. Now, heart rate average, this is interesting too. So the average for the entire 40 minutes was 160 beats per minute, which is the highest average I've generated for more than a decade. Now, it was at sea level, typically I'm at altitude, it was a very warm day for me. It was 75 at dawn, and I was running in direct sunlight for some of it, and it was humid. So there was a lot of heat stress, uh, and my heart rate went up and kept going up. Now that was an interesting data point as well, because a threshold effort, when we're sort of at that, uh, kind of that hour of power effort, should be relatively stable for heart rate. Yet what I was seeing was my heart rate didn't really stabilize. It was creeping up for the entire duration of the race. Now, some of that might have been temperature, but my hunch is my real threshold's probably a little slower. So let's have a look at what I might do with that and have a look at the zones. So as I said, you can, if you're using training peaks, you can run your zones. I just I do them manually, so I enter them. So that first threshold that I talked about at 12 kilometers per hour is the break point between zone one and two, and I just enter that. And then based on feeling, I also check these other zones. And the subjective perception chart that John Hellman's put together, which is really useful, I'll link up a link uh, so you can click to that uh, in the comments uh, for yourself. And it's a useful chart to kind of understand how zone one through five are gonna feel. And then also within those, for the higher zones, three, four, and five, John lays out the duration that most people are gonna be able to hold those zone paces and those zone efforts, which is quite useful to cross check. So you'll see he set the threshold at 15 uh, there, and that's, that's useful. If anything, no, it's making me think, hmm, could be a little high. But I've got a half marathon coming up in a month, and that's going to give me another look at things. So when you make adjustments to your zones, change slowly. Don't be jumping around all the time. What I recommend you do is as you're building up these data sets, you make gradual adjustments. Because on any given day, our zones will be a little bit different. You don't want to be jumping all over the place. You'll find your heart rate zones are a lot more stable. And heart rate zones are right here. Now, in my heart rate zones, I've got my threshold set at 158. And as I said, I averaged 160 for the 40 minutes. But for most 
of the 40 minutes, my heart rate was well over 160. So when we do, when we look at the whole sample from starting an event, I think my heart rate was about 87 at the start. So I have that first K where I'm way under the average and that pulls the average down. Now, if it was, uh, what I could do is I could do a slice of the last 30 minutes of the race or the last 20 minutes of the race and I could get a average of that. However, as I said before, my heart rate never really stabilized. Uh, it was kind of creeping up the whole time. So that was a sign that likely it wasn't a sustainable steady state kind of zone four effort. It was an effort that was probably high zone four uh, for those conditions on the day. So I'm not going to really be making any adjustments to my heart rate. So hope that helps you understand how you can fit in uh, the data and make better choices. With race data and time trial data, they are really helpful for these higher zones, zone three, four, and five to kind of dial them in. For the lower zones, zone one and zone two, I strongly recommend you use lactate and just look for that first lactate turn point, the first lactate threshold. So that is the pace or the power just before that lactate pops up. So it's where it bottoms out for you. Thanks for listening. Be back next time.